Tracy. Hi. May I come in? Well, I was uh, just getting ready to go to the clinic. I, I should have called first. I was going to, but then I decided I'd just take a chance and come by. Well, I like to get there early. Monday mornings are usually our busiest. Well, I can come back another time, then. Oh, come on in, Stacy. Thanks. I won't keep you long. I promise. I don't really know where to begin. Just say what's on your mind. Terry came to see me the other day. Yes, I know. She told me. I thought she would. Did she tell you everything? Oh, just about. And it should be easy to talk to you now, but it isn't. I've rehearsed what I was going to say, but it still isn't easy. Well, you want to make it some other time? Actually, I would. But I really shouldn't put this off. I have something that I need to say, and I'd like to say it now. I think Alicia wants her breakfast this morning. Yes, she does. She just prefers to play with it first. Come on, baby. Now, just one more spoonful. Come on. Prunes. No wonder she doesn't want to eat. Yuck. Well, oh, have you know, for your information, you ate the very same thing when you were her age and you loved it. Prunes? Yes, prunes. But I hate that. Well, you didn't when you were a year old. If you say so, but you couldn't pay me to eat that now. How well I know. Hey, you stop that. I just want to taste it. Hey, good morning, one and all. Good morning. How's my baby? Hi, Dad. Say, did I eat this mushy kind of prunes when I was young? Yeah, why? Well, he, um, mm -hmm. seems to, he can't believe it because he dislikes it so much now, right? <laughs> well, Jimmy, that does happen. People change, you know, and that's a fact of life. That sounds like some from one of your stories, Dad. <laughs> it probably is. It's true, though. You know, we're always changing, buddy. Daddy's little girl. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading? This is my article I did on Charles Carpenter. Hey, I looked at that just a little while ago. I didn't see your name. Grant Ridley wrote that, see? Grant Ridley? Isn't he a new wait, reporter, Gene? Wait, you guys. I'm Grant Ridley. You? How come? Yeah. What are you doing with another name? Look, I'm working on another investigation, and it's just important that I keep a low profile. I don't understand. What kind of investigation is it? Jimmy, I can't go into it right now. Not just yet, anyway. Does it have something to do with the government? An expose on corruption or something like that? No, it doesn't have anything to do with politics or anything like that. But I am working on an, an expose, and when the time is right, I'll tell you a little bit more about it, all right? Why can't you tell me now? Oh, uh, Jimmy, have you finished your cereal? Yes, Mom, I have. Then why don't you uh, take Alicia upstairs and play with her for a while? Do I have to? Yes. You just want to get rid of me. You are such a smart man. <laughs> Listen, buddy, like I said, when the time is right, I will tell you everything you want to know, okay? Okay, see you, Dad. Now, listen, you take her upstairs, and I'll, and I'll be up there in a little bit, okay? Okay, oh, Mommy. Oh, baby. Be right upstairs. Save that sucker for her daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, would you mind telling me what you're up to? What do you mean, about the byline? Of course that's what I mean. How come you didn't tell me you were using a pseudonym? Well, oh, baby, I didn't know. I wasn't until McGovern suggested it, but, you know, it really makes sense. Well, why don't you explain it to me? Well, baby, it's just another precaution, that's all. Oh, yeah, sure. And McGovern uh, wouldn't want you using uh, false names on your stories unless he thought you could be in real danger. Now, come on. Don't start exaggerating things. I told you, I'm just taking a little precaution. Well, what about Gene Foster? 
Well, that's the name I'm using for Domi. You know that. Yeah, but why are you using two phony names? To play it safe. Oh, come on now, Gene. You remember when you, when you first told me about this Domi thing and that you were going to infiltrate that place? You knew I was worried then. Look, I know you were worried, and I'm going to tell you now there is nothing to worry about. Now, I can take care of myself. Besides, it's, it's going to be a great story and a lot of fun, too. Fun? Yeah, I mean, you know, if I'm going to break into this little precious inner circle, McGovern suggested that I <clears throat> flash around some big bucks and act like a big shot. <laughs> it's going to oh, be yeah? fun. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can, um, fool this doctor, what's her name? Dr. Vanessa Vazan. I think I can play the part, don't you? I mean, rich man, his marriage is on the rocks, he's bored out of his head, and he's got the lowest low self-esteem. Hmm, maybe. But just as long as you remember that your marital problems are with Mrs. Foster, and not with Mrs. Redland. Oh, wait a minute, baby. You don't have to worry about that little girl. I won't forget that. No, you ain't got to worry, sugar. Hmm? <laughs> sugar, get out of here. <laughs> you would think, being a journalist, I'd be able to come out with all the right words. I guess what I'm really trying to say is that I've acted like a fool. I've overreacted, and I'm sorry. I had no right to jump to conclusions and accuse Terry of betraying my confidence. And I also had no right to talk about her to you the way that I did. And I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? Yes. Of course I forgive you. But that doesn't excuse the way you acted. I know. Both you and Peter have been very immature where Terry and I are concerned. Did Peter apologize also? Yes, he did. I went to Terry's the same night she came to see you. And Peter was there and we talked. And not only did he apologize for his attitude, but he gave us his blessings for our marriage. Good. I want you to be happy, Dad. And I know that Terry makes you happy, so that's good enough for me. <laughs> so I give you my blessing. <laughs> I don't know how happy that makes me to hear you say that. Well, I just wish everything could turn out as well. Are you referring to Russ? Among other things. Dad, the way I overreacted, it was more than immaturity, and it worries me. Do you think that it's possible that I, that I left the hospital too soon? Say, you're really delighting in seeing this happen to Charles, aren't you? Of course, that come as a surprise. I suppose not. You don't tell me you're beginning to feel sorry for him. Well, I'm not sorry for him, no. I mean, there's certainly no love lost between your brother and me. I just wonder if I could do that to my brother. If I had one. Is this Vaughn Sumner I'm talking with? Or an imposter? Are you surprised to hear me talk like that? Well, quite frankly, yes. Well, quite frankly, so am I. I don't know. I'm... Don't you have any doubts about doing that to him? None! None! Oh, I know, I know. Blood is thicker than water. Hmm? Well, maybe that was true when Charles and I were kids. But too many years and too many things have come between us. Besides, he doesn't have blood in his veins. He's got ice water. Although that water's turned to steam lately. <laughs> you should have seen him puff into the Greenbrier restaurant and interrupt the executive luncheon. Oh, no, right there in front of the old carpenter shipping gang. Yeah, oh, he was livid. <laughs> well, wait till he hears the latest. What's that? Well, I discussed your offer with my father and his financial advisors, and we've decided that in the long run, it'll be profitable to accept the partnership. Marvelous, marvelous. <laughs> Say, I guarantee it'll be a profitable venture for both of us. Well, be that as it may, Preston, let me inform you. They were none too thrilled about the sharp decline in those stocks. I mean, we stand to lose quite a bit. Well, isn't Hartwell Industries interested in picking up the stock? Uh, there's been some talk, but that's nothing definite. Well, if worse comes to worse, you can always take it as a tax write-off. The important thing is that you have decided to join a new company. Best decision you've ever made. Yeah, that's true. I mean, after all, we can write it off. And with that new technology you plan on implementing, that's what really sealed the deal. 
That's what I hope. <laughs> Look, you know, I have already um, made some inquiries into some local construction companies to get bids on the docks and the warehouses, yeah. and in all likelihood, low bid is going to come from Prescott Development. Well, isn't that a bit premature to be determining that? No, not really. Uh -uh. Prescott enjoyed an excellent reputation in this area until a year ago when they were involved in a building scandal. Well, Preston, that's hardly an admirable recommendation. Ah, company was completely exonerated. But since then, business hasn't been too good. They are hungry, my boy. Oh, I see. So because of that, you're hoping that they're going to turn in a low bid just to get the job. Yes. Well, can you be sure they're going to do some quality work? They will build that place exactly the way we want it. Well, keep me posted on that. Well, of course I will, of course. Uh, Courtney! Dad. Courtney? I, uh, I read the article in the newspaper this morning. What does it all mean? I think the article's quite clear. <laughs> well, yes, but it doesn't quite say why this is all happening to Uncle Charles, and I have a feeling you've got a lot to do with it. Look, sweetheart, nothing would give me more joy than to explain it all to you, but I have an appointment. I've got to run. Vaughn will fill you in. Bye-bye, baby. But... I'll see you later, Vaughn. Preston? Well, of all things... <laughs> well, I'd be more than happy to fill you in on all the details. I'm sure you'd be thrilled, Vaughn. I wouldn't be. Now, as far as I'm concerned, our lawyers can do any talking that's necessary. Well... If you're afraid to be alone with me in the same room... Afraid? <laughs> afraid of what? Then stay, Courtney. I'll fill you in on everything. Daddy, did I leave the hospital too soon? Stacy, what's most important is what you think. But I don't know what I think. I know that I overreacted and I know why. Terry helped me to see that it was really a reaction to Russ's rejection. You mean that interpretation of that rejection? What? Did Russ really reject you? Yes, of course he did. Did he? Or was it your interpretation of that relationship that made you think it was a rejection? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're probably right. Stacy, did you need a relationship so deeply that, that you created one? Well, I don't think so. After all, Gil offered me what I wanted from Russ and I said no to him. No, with, with Russ, it was the person, not the desperate need of some kind. No, I saw in Russ someone that I wanted to love, and I wanted him to love me. It just didn't work out. That doesn't sound crazy, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I didn't know all this was going on inside of me. Thank you for helping me to see it. But I, I wonder if... Do you think it's possible that, that I don't really love Russ? Now, why do you say that? Well, maybe what I feel for him is some sort of crush. You know, like a schoolgirl's crush, only, only ten years too late. What do you think? <laughs> Stacy, that's a possibility. Then maybe the anger that I felt towards Terry and Russ was mostly anger at myself for being so stupid. <laughs> you know, I bet that's really it. You know something? What? I think you've answered your own question. About leaving the hospital too soon. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think I'm gonna make it. I know you are. The article says my father's taking four of Carpenter Shipping's top, top executives to uh, start his own company. I guess I can only be grateful he won't be dealing with the Sumners any longer. Well, Courtney, for your information... What? For your information, my family stands to lose a great deal as a result of your father's actions. Maybe you are getting what you deserve. I doubt it, though. No, uh, the losses from carpenter shipping couldn't hurt the Sumners with all their other holdings. Well, it's still a loss. Yes. A business as well as a personal loss. You know, when I think about it, Vaughn, you really aren't doing that well after all, are you? 
Now, why do I find such comfort in that? Courtney. Goodbye, Mom. Courtney, there is one area which I've had some success in of late. I've been seeing a urologist and consulting with Dr. Phillips. And the latest tests indicate that my sterility may no longer be a problem. Your uh, sterility is cured? Well, not completely, but uh, once I overcome the impotence, yes, I, I'll be able to have a child. Isn't that great news? Well, for you, maybe I couldn't care less. Oh, but Courtney, don't you see? I, I mean, I'll be able to, to give you the child you've always wanted. Uh, you can what? We can have a child. How, Vaughn? You're still impotent. Yes, but it's only a matter of time, Courtney. You hope. Uh, how did all this come about? Um, hormones? An operation, maybe? I mean, how did this cure occur? Well, actually, the doctors aren't quite sure about that. What does that mean? Well, it means that there are certain cases where sterility is cured with, without surgery. And I fall into that category. <sighs> <laughs> really, Vaughn? Something like that I could expect from Peter Davidson, but not from you. You expect me to believe that? It's the truth, Courtney. You can ask Dr. Phillips. I'll go with you. Oh, sure. Sure, now we'll go see Dr. Phillips, but when I wanted to, you wouldn't go. Oh, come on, Courtney, that's in the past. Which is where you can find our marriage. It doesn't have to be. Have you forgotten about the annulment? Courtney, it's not too late to drop that suit. I have no intention of doing that. But what about my news? I don't believe you. It is the truth, Courtney. Be that as it may, I don't care. But Courtney, don't you see? One of my problems is, is out of the way. And I know I'll be able to overcome the impotence. I know it. And I'll be able to be the husband that you've always wanted. It's too late, Vaughn. It doesn't have to be, Courtney. Please, don't you see? I'll be, I'll be able to, lo to love you completely. I'll be able to give you all the children you want. You just have to give me some more time. Vaughn, well, I don't know what to say. Courtney, I have one more thing to say. I love you. Oh, come in, Barbara. Please, have thank, a seat. Thank you, Dr. Fazana. It's good to be here. And it's good to see you. My, you're looking well. Oh, thank you. I, I don't know how I look after visiting Winslow. Isn't he... Oh, uh, wasn't he your husband? Yes. It, it's just been three years to the day I, I visit his grave every year. Did you experience any communication with him? Yes, he... He told me he still loves me. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, it is. Did he ask you anything else or tell you anything else? Yes, he, he told me he approves of the upcoming merger between Gilbert Electronics and Matrix Industries. Oh, is there going to be a merger? Yes, it's going to be a very big deal. It, well, if you can, you should buy as much stock in both as you possibly can. Why, thank you, Barbara. You know I'm going to make a note to do that right now. Thank you. You're very helpful. Well, not as helpful as you've been to me, Dr. Fazan. I don't know what I'd do without you. I know the answer to that. You'd be alone and lonely, but you're not because you have Domi. And you? Yes, and me. Doctor, when am I going to be able to advance to the next level? The next level, yes. The highest level in Domi, the master level. Yes, when? You needn't be concerned about that. Oh, but I am. I want to be everything that you say I can be, and I can't do that unless I enter the master level. Now, I've already experienced out-of-body communication. I know there's more, so much more. Yes, that's very true, but you're almost there, Barbara. I am? Yes. Now, I just want you to relax. That's it. Relax and take a deep cleansing breath. That's right. Now, begin to get in touch with your inner self. I will fear nothing. Fear 
is but an obstacle of my own creation. It is destroyed as I so wish. Oh, come on, baby, what are you saying there? This whole thing gives me the creeps. Carla, don't worry. I can take care of myself. Besides, don't you think this domey should be exposed for what it is? Of course I do. But you're not even sure what it is exactly, and that's what worries me. Yeah, me too. But I intend to find out. Listen, be careful, okay? Baby, I will, I will. What kind of kiss is that? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Now, that's more like it. Yeah, I'll say it is. Bye. Now, you remember now, you be careful, okay? Don't worry, Carla. Come on, baby, I'm gonna be fine. Now, when I count to three, I want you to awaken. One, two, three. Dr. Fazan, what happened? That's what I want you to tell me. Well, now, let me see. Uh, I don't think I want to say. Why not, Barbara? You might laugh. Why, Barbara, no. I'd never laugh at you, never. Tell me. Well, even though I know that there were only the two of us here in the office, I felt the presence of somebody else. Is that possible? Now, I know that sometimes I can talk to Winslow at the grave, but... This was different. Could I have felt somebody else in this room? Indeed you could have, Barbara. And I believe your senses are finely honed. You are ready for the final step in Domi.